Valley Week was last week, so this week was really our first full week of Sunday School. It's so exciting to see everyone here for Sunday School. Miss Debbie Archer and I were blessed to be in with our youth this Sunday. They are awesome. So let us just settle any anxiousness or worries or anything taking our attention away from our Creator, from the God of covenant and the God of relationship as we prepare to worship this morning. Take a deep breath in and out. And as the prelude is played and the candles are lit, lit, let us remember why we are here.
Jesus Christ. Welcome to our worship service this morning here at First Presbyterian Church in Moxville. Welcome to those of you joining us online. If you are familiar with the song Breathe that Aaron just played for us, this is the air I breathe. Both the Hebrew and the Greek word that we most often translate as spirit can also be translated as wind and as breath. And indeed, our very life is because of the breath and the spirit that God gives us. Thanks be to God. A couple of announcements to share with you this morning. You continue to see our uh, nomination insert in your bulletin as we are in the process um, of selecting our new class of ruling elders for session. Our nominating ministry team has been doing some weekly Bible study um, through email. We've all been reading the same passage. And for those of you on teams familiar with word share prayer, we've kind of been considering what word or phrase stands out to us and how is God speaking through that word or phrase as we are about the work of nominating our next class of ruling elders. So we all have a job in this process. I encouraged you last week to already be in prayer as to whether God is calling you or not at this time, so that should you receive a call from the nominating team, you will be prepared to answer because you've already been in prayer. But there's another thing that we need everyone to do, and that is be in prayer for the nominating team as they are about this work, that we will be open to that wind, breath, spirit of God and be led to the people that God is calling at this time to serve. I received a text message from Judy Sherrill sharing that John Barnett was home from rehab. Um, if any of you would like to send a card or, or call or visit, I'm sure Linda and John Barnett would be appreciative of that. One little change to our schedule. Unfortunately, we will not have Cove's birthday celebration today, but Brian, hopefully next week, is that the plan? Cove's been a little sick, and so we're going to postpone that birthday celebration. But the youth are meeting after church today for lunch and then for a, a time on the town with our youth leaders, Rich and Brenda. So we do have that. Um, yesterday was the shower for Kendrick and Alyssa and baby fruits at Farmington Baptist Church. And Kevin and I just wanted to thank you all. I know Kendrick is no longer a member here, but thank you for your love and support of them as we anticipate grandbaby fruits who's due October 6th. So coming soon. Any other joys or concerns or announcements to make? All right, my friends, let us worship God. Please join in our call to worship. We step out in trust, not knowing where we go. God is faithful. We follow your lead, O oh Lord, even when we don't understand. God is faithful. Bring us to the place where your promise is fulfilled. God is faithful. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Faithful God, Abram and his family trusted you with their lives and all that they owned. May we also place our days within your hands, sure of the promise you have made us, to go before us, beside us, and after us with your protection. Faithful God, you have called us to places unknown, and have promised to be our guide. Yet we prefer to find our own way and do our own thing, taking credit when things go well and blaming others when they don't. We resist putting our trust in you. We forget your covenant with us, and we suffer for it. Turn us back around to walk where you are leading. 
Forgive us for wandering from the path. In Jesus' name, amen. God is continually faithful to all who seek guidance. May you know the grace which has been freely offered to you and the special blessing which God continually grants to all who simply ask. Receive the forgiveness of your loving Creator for the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. On behalf of the Stewardship Ministry team, I want to uh, welcome you to our kickoff of our Stewardship Commitment Season. All right, I got to put that down. This is our church's budgeting season, which is when we offer our pledges. But as we've said many times before, stewardship is a year-long discipline. It's a discipleship of time, of talents, of money. It's not a once a year activity. If someone were to ask you about our church, what would you say? Would you tell them how much money it takes to support the worship and music team or outreach or congregational care, building and grounds, the staff CE? Is that what you would tell them? I don't think so either. I think what you would tell them is about the life of the church what makes it alive, how you connect with the lives of others through the activity of the church. You would talk about how God works in and through the lives in worship, in Bible study, and in choir through our youth, through Sunday school, bells, ministry teams, in so many ways. That's what you would tell them. Those are relational kinds of things. We said it in our Sunday school class today. God is relational. We serve a relational God. God chose Abraham to have a relationship with Abraham and with all of us. God is a relational God who shares his story through scripture and through our lives and through the lives of others. The pillars that you see here today are what we've identified to support those relational activities. That's why last year we began to talk about a narrative budget. We talked about stewardship as an all year long discipline. We talked about the story of how First Presbyterian Church is acting out our faith and being the hands and feet of Christ in our community. It's all year long, it's not just once a year. So we support these pillars of worship and music of care and compassion, discipleship, and missions and outreach. So you will be getting a brochure mailed to you this week, and it will have this chart on there, along with some other things for each of the different, um, different pillars, thank you, about how our budget is divided up to support those pillars. Now the circle in the middle I don't really have that label, but that is just to point out that is the portion of the planned budget that's really unfunded by our pillars or by our, by our pledges, excuse me. We support these pillars by using our time and our talent and our financial resources. We support these pillars to grow God's kingdom, to grow our church, to grow personally. And so I thought about that, church growth and personal growth. And I thought about how we talk about our church needs to grow. And I wonder if in some ways it's easier to talk about that. Not necessarily easier to do, but it's easier to talk about that because that's outside, that's somewhere else, that's others. That's not me. That's not what I need to do or personal growth. Me, what you need to do, what each of us is called to do our spiritual growth, growth in our individual faith or in our discipleship of Jesus Christ. Sometimes talking about ourselves is 
a little bit more uncomfortable than talking about something else. Growth in giving of our time and talents and financial resources that support the pillars that we just talked about. So I'm going to list a few things to just kind of start you thinking about how you can expand uh, our growth or how we can grow and, and you can expand that list as well. But questions like, do I attend Bible studies or Sunday school? If I do, great. Am I a faithful person in reading those lessons and eager to learn and to share with my brothers and sisters in Christ so that we can discern together what God is saying to us? Could I take more of a leadership role in Bible study or Sunday school? If I don't attend, why not? Is this a way that I can grow my stewardship of time and talent? Another question might be, am I part of a ministry team? If not, why not? There is something that you can do. There's something that each of us can do to help grow and to grow from. If I'm on a ministry team, do I take an active role? More than just attending the meetings, is there a way that I can grow my stewardship through active participation in a ministry team? These are good questions, not always ones that we want to ask or we take the time to ask, but we should ask and we should pray about those and think about those. So along with that, this is a little harder to read probably. Um, I'm going to see if we can't create a link in our uh, web page to this as well so you can take a look at it. But to give you the gist of what this is, this is talking about financial stewardship. Scripture tells us God wants us to give of our first fruits, of, the, of our labors and of the blessings that we receive. And, and that's oftentimes easier to say than it is to do. The point is that stewardship is a discipline that we have to nurture and we have to grow. What can we do with this gift is the same thing we would do with any other gift. By looking at it, praying about it, each year deciding how we will grow. By asking questions like, is my pledge the same as last year and the year before? Is it time to evaluate that? So this chart might help. And we've used this chart in other churches. And it's just an illustration to, to kind of help us. So you can see it's in the form of a stair step. And underneath the stairs are different giving or pledge ranges. So the first one is 0 to 50. And these are monthly numbers. And above the stair is seven people. So there are seven in our congregation that that is their monthly pledge. And the next one is 50 to 100, and there are seven in those. And, and so this is not um, to, to really make anyone uncomfortable or anything like that. Not at all. What, what it is for is to help us look at things in a different way and just evaluate. So find yourself on the stair steps and prayerfully consider if you can grow. The point is to ask those questions and consider how we might grow and pray for the Holy Spirit to lead us in that growth. The, the stair steps can also be used in the same things that I talked about, not just money, but with time and talent. Where am I? Is there a way or a step I can take to grow? Joining a ministry team, being part of Sunday school, helping with the youth, you name it. So this week, we will mail out a time and talent sheet, a narrative budget brochure, and a pledge card. And over the next four weeks, we'll have different folks come up and speak about the ministry pillars. And as they do, I ask that you would pray about where and how God might be calling you to grow. This year, the challenge is to each of us to really look at that time and talent sheet and not just check the same boxes that we checked last year. Pray about it and find places that you can grow in your stewardship and deepen the relationship that we have with others and with God. As you fill out your pledge card, I ask you to pray about where and how God might be calling you to grow. We ask that you return those on our commitment Sunday, which is going to be October 16th. And after worship that day, we will share in a meal and fellowship time. So we're anxious to be able to do that. The stewardship ministry team wants to thank you for what you have done to support the ministry areas 
and how we carry out the privilege of being the hands and feet of Christ. We're a vibrant and active and loving body of Christ. One update that I will share with you is in conjunction with the outreach ministry team. Um, that is through your generosity. We have been able to write a check to our missionaries, Mark and Miriam, for $3,300 to support their mission. So I think I would normally say amen to that, but what would Mark say? Wow, wow that's exactly right. Great, great job. That, that, that is just one of the wonderful things about this church, um, th that we are such a loving and caring and compassionate and giving group of people. But, but we know, like anything else, you can't stay in one spot. We, we need to conti continue to look at how we can grow. So we look to the future with hope and excitement for where God will lead us and bless each of us. Thanks be to God. And now, youth, would you please come down? Kids, come on down. Meet me down front. Good morning. How are y'all today? Good? Good? How are you? How are you? So have you ever done anything that made you scared? Yeah, and I'm not talking about scared like a haunted house or whatever like that. I'm talking about something that maybe made you scared. Like I was thinking maybe when you uh, went to a new school or a new grade in school, or maybe just starting school or preschool. Have you ever done that? How'd that make you feel? Horrified, okay? That is not a word I had thought of, but that works. That works. Horrified. Makes you scared, nervous, anxious, horrified. So maybe there was somebody like a parent that kind of helped you, at least helped you to get to school and make you feel better. Maybe there was a teacher that walked beside you and showed you where your classes were, or a friend or somebody, that another student, that kind of helped you get through it, to just kind of keep going. What about things like, hopefully you don't say horrified on this one, but like riding a bike or jumping into a pool into the deep end. Did that scare you? Yeah. Maybe might have made you a little nervous or a little anxious, right? Those are things that scare you. But for riding a bike, maybe somebody walked along beside you to help you. No? Your dad kind of just pushed you and said, go. Hey, sometimes <laughs> that works. But you know what? Your dad was there. Your dad was there with you. And if something would have happened, he would have picked you up and taken care of you. Yeah. Sometimes you just, if your child won't go in the water, you just kind of say, here, I'm going to help you. Yeah, you know, but, but they're with you and they're walking alongside you. And though even though you might be scared and things, there's somebody walking alongside you. And that's kind of like our Bible story today with Abraham, well, Abram and Sarai. We, we know them as Abraham and Sarah, but their names haven't changed yet. So they're Abram and Sarai. And you know what God says to them? God says, I want you to pack up some of your family, all your stuff, and I want you to move. I learned in Sunday school, God told them to move maybe about 700 miles. 700 miles. And that's like, would that make you scared? A little anxious? Might make you horrified, huh? Yeah, might make you horrified. But you know what God said? God said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to walk alongside you, and I'm going to be with you. And so Abram and Sarai were faithful, and they did that. God said one more thing. God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you things, whether it's, it's health or happiness or children or, or possessions, whatever. God said, I'm going to bless you. And do you think God said, I'm going to bless you so you can keep it all to yourself? No, that doesn't really sound like what God would say. What would God say? I'm going to bless you so you could share it with other people. I think that's exactly what God said. In fact, I know that's what God said. He said, I will bless you so you can be a blessing to other people. What a great message. There's two things in this message. We can boil it all down into one, uh, one easy message. Okay? Trust God. Repeat after me. Trust God. Lou louder. Louder. I can't hear you. Trust God and share with others. 
Now, what kind of world would we have if everybody trusted God and shared with others? No fighting. It wouldn't be horrifying, would it? No, it'd be a great world. That's what God says to us. God says, trust me and share what you have with others. All right? That's our message. Trust me. Trust God. Come on, say it again. Trust God. Yep. Share with others. Awesome. Good deal. Let's, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Circle up here. You want to join us? All right. Good job. All right, let's go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. We forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Trust God. Share with us. Let's dance and sing our hymn. Let us pray. You see us and you know us better than we know ourselves. Open our eyes that we may see you. See your spirit in your written word. See your spirit in the lives of others. See beyond the physical to the heart of the matter. That your mercy and love may touch our very soul. That we might respond in gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. The Lord said to Abram, leave your land, your family, and your father's household for the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. Abram left just as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. 
Now, Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all of their possessions, and those who became members of their household in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as the sacred place at Shechem and at the Oak of Morah. The Canaanites lived in the land at that time. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, I give this land to your descendants. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. From there he traveled toward the mountains east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and worshiped the Lord's name. Then Abram set out toward the arid southern plain, making and breaking camp as he went. The word of the Lord. From the book of Genesis and our fabulous youth, Genesis means, do you remember? I heard it. Beginning, beginning, we talked about that today. In the beginning, God created. And last week we had the story of Noah and the flood and the first covenant of the Old Testament where God promised never again to destroy the whole earth with a flood. And through Noah and Noah's family, the Lord tries again. He calls Noah and his family to live as God's people and to be good stewards of the earth. We talked about stewards, too, taking care of things. But once again, things don't go so well. The earth does get repopulated. But in chapter 11, the chapter preceding what Rex just read, the people, once again, refuse to be God's people. They refuse to live God's way. They refuse to be good stewards of all they have been given. Chapter 12, we find God trying yet again, this time making a covenant with Abram. And Abram is an unlikely option for blessing all of the earth for his family is dying out. And those who are alive are barren. This doesn't look like a good choice for God. But God. But God's ways are not our ways. Chapter 12 begins, Now the Lord said to Abram, did you hear that? Into this hopeless situation, God speaks. We know nothing about the relationship between Abram and the Lord. All we do know is this family is about to die out until God speaks. Somehow God promises this desperate family will become a great nation. And then what does God tell Abram? But to leave. Horrified. I can imagine Abram's response. Leave? Leave all I know? Uh, no thank you. I mean, I know things aren't great, but... At least I know where I am and what to expect. Leave and go to the unknown? Mm, I don't think so. It's so hard to leave what you know and what you have become comfortable with, even when what you have become comfortable with is hopelessness. And why risk being disappointed? But God, but God offers hope in the call and in the promise. God knows Abram and calls him by name and has a purpose and a plan for his life. Now, God doesn't spoon feed Abram all the answers, but God does promise to be involved 
to be with him. And we continue to see God's promise of relationship that we saw last week with Noah. And God says, I will. I will. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Do you get the picture here? Do you see who is in charge? Do you see who is going to make things happen? Yes, Abram has to act. He has to walk by faith and not by sight, for it is through his obedience and his actions that he will live into God's promises. This is the complete opposite of what was in chapter 11 before this chapter. The people building the Tower of Babel. They said, come, let us make bricks. Come, let us build for ourselves a city and make a name for ourselves. They wanted to be in control, and they were doing things their way and for themselves. Then there is God doing the work through Abraham and Sarah, a couple representing a family that is about to die out, and God says, I will. Again and again, I am amazed at who God calls in Scripture. A barren family, the youngest son, a teenage girl, a foul-mouthed fisherman, a prostitute, a boy with two fish. Da -da 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 -da. A Samaritan woman. The world calls the healthy, the wealthy, the rich, the popular, the powerful. God often calls the exact opposite. And God calls today into our most hopeless situation. And God promises, I will. But do we hear him? Or are we busy building our own bricks and our own towers and trying to make our name great for our own selfish purposes? Will we trust the promise maker, trust God, and let go? God says, go, and I will. How do we respond? What did Abram do? Verse 4, so Abram went as the Lord told him. Abram had a choice to make. He had to, stop, had to decide whether or not to leave the safety of the known or walk into the promise of the unknown. He had to, to decide to leave the barrenness and the hopelessness that he was comfortable with and trust the promise, and more importantly, trust the promise maker. The promise gave him hope for a future, but it was not in the safety of what he knew. He headed out in, a, in immediate obedience and faith. Hebrews in the New Testament, written thousands of years later, said this about Abraham. Chapter 11. By faith, Abram set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren because he considered. 
him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Maybe God is not calling you to go to a new place geographically, but maybe he is calling you to give up that which has you stuck. To move from the known to the unknown so that God can show you God's purpose. To move away from the things that keep you from God that keep you away from meaningful relationships. Because whatever situation you find yourself in, God speaks. And God's speech is resurrection. God's promise is new life. God calls the barren one to life. God gives life to the dead and calls into existence things that do not exist. Friends, it was not easy for Abraham and Sarah. It was a journey. They did not follow perfectly. They made mistakes, but they kept following. It's a journey for us. We do not receive the promise from God and then get the complete map. It's not a straight path to get to the destination. And actually, the destination is journeying daily with God, living one's life day in and day out in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in with the hope of the promise, knowing God is faithful. God calls and God promises and God wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing to others. As we begin our stewardship season, I ask you as Kevin asked you to prayerfully consider what God is calling you to what God is calling us to. And again, as you fill out your time and talent sheet and your pledge cards, do not be on automatic pilot and mark the things you automatically mark, but pray about it. Maybe it is the same thing, but be in prayer with God about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you which ministry team would be blessed by your presence and participation. Ask the Holy Spirit if you are giving all you can financially. Be open to the movement and the call of the Holy Spirit. And as you have been blessed, be a blessing to others. May it be so. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God, we are grateful for all you have done, for the ways you work in and among and through us. All at the same time, you pour out your blessing and invite us to join you on a journey, to turn our eyes forward and to risk following where you lead. We pause today to lift up those among us who feel stuck where they are, ourselves, our friends, and neighbors, people who maybe we have not met, but whose lives are entwined with ours in your great human family. Those who cannot imagine another way, those who are trapped in grief or despair or illness or violence or cycles of poverty, who both long for newness and are afraid to try again. May they know themselves to be guided by your strong and supportive hand. As we seek to follow you, O oh God, we carry with us the hopes and fears of those who have lost themselves along the way who have tried to change themselves for the approval of another, who have forgotten their own stories underneath all the labels that define them, who have borne so many burdens they no longer recognize themselves. May they know your grace that gifts us with truth, and may they experience your love for them and who they truly are. As we respond to your blessing, O oh God, we commit ourselves in your name to put out a hand to help those for whom the risks feel bigger than the possibility. Those who have been held back rather than helped along those who no longer have the confidence or ability to trust themselves, let alone you or others. May they experience your presence through our love as their neighbors. Lord, help us to trust you. Help us to share what we have with others. Help us to be good stewards of all our blessings. Help us to be a blessing to others. We pray all these things in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand as we sing our stewardship hymn. You will see it throughout our season here the next several weeks. For the life that you have been given, let us stand and sing. today is responsive, so please join me. As we have worshipped, 
So we go into the world, stepping out bravely, stepping out boldly, following in the footsteps of so many before us, remembering as Abram did, that we are never alone. God is with us every step of the way. In wilderness and mountaintop, he is there and we will follow. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. on the journey of the narrow road and those who've gone before us line the way cheering on the faithful encouraging the weary their lives a stirring testament to God's sustaining grace Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run the race not only for the prize, but it proves that they before us, let us leave to those behind us the heritage of faithfulness passed on through godly lives. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live inspire them to obey. Find us faithful. After all, our hopes and dreams have come and gone, and our children sift through all we've left behind. May the clues that they discover and the memories they uncover become the light that leads them to the road we each must find. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. The footprints that we leave lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. that we leave, leave them to 